In the month of my capture, I was bound in chains, and I was brought to the great sea, which was surrounded by armed soldiers. There they put me in the great sea, which is called the Atlantic Ocean. They made me work very hard, they beat me every day, and I was kept in chains and handcuffs so that I could not escape from them. They bind me every night, and I am in great distress from the chains. These are the words of Omar Ibn Said, the first black Muslim slave who entered America in 1807. Unlike other slaves, he was highly educated and fluent in Arabic, allowing him to write about slavery the way he saw through his eyes. He wrote an autobiography in Arabic that was later translated into various languages and has been added to the Library of Congress. But why did his autobiography remain hidden? And nobody talked about it. What shocking accounts does it contain that are changing the American narrative and making America ashamed? Let's find out. The Black History Archives Omar Ayn Said was born in 1770 in Feudator, which is known as present-day Senegal. Said's early life was steeped in the traditions of a devout Muslim family within a culturally vibrant community. His Islamic faith was integral to his daily existence, with exposure to Quranic teachings and Islamic customs beginning from his earliest years. Said reflects on the significance of his religious upbringing, noting, from my earliest days, the principles of Islam were woven into the fabric of my existence. My family, much like others in Feudatoro, placed great emphasis on education, particularly in Arabic and Islamic studies. As a youth, Said showed a sharp intellect and an insatiable thirst for knowledge. He delved into Arabic grammar, poetry, and theology, earning admiration in his community for his adeptness in engaging with Islamic text and scholarly discourse. In his own words, he recalls, I was driven by a thirst for understanding. Feudatoro, where Said spent his formative years, was a bustling center of cultural exchange enriched by diverse languages, music, and art. In his autobiography, he fondly recalls the cultural interaction, stating, My home was at the crossroads of West African trade routes, fostering a rich exchange of cultures. The myriad languages, the rhythm of music, and the vivid artistry left an indelible mark on my upbringing, fostering a deep appreciation for my cultural heritage. The close-knit community and familial bonds of Feudatoro provided Set with a sense of belonging and support. However, Set's tranquility was shattered when he was forcibly uprooted from his homeland and subjected to the horrors of slavery in the United States. Recounting the trauma of enslavement, he laments, the anguish of being torn from my family, my community, and the cultural fabric that defined my existence was profound. Despite the devastation, Said's unwavering faith and resilience fueled his resistance against oppression and his assertion of humanity. In his memoir, Set recounts the moment of his capture with stark clarity, describing the violent wrenching from his homeland. He shares the heartache and disorientation of being suddenly torn from his loved ones and community, his cries for help lost amidst the chaos. Chained and shackled, Set endured the dehumanizing treatment that characterized the slave trade, his dignity stripped away as he became mere property. The horrors of Said's journey persisted as he crossed the treacherous Atlantic Ocean aboard a slave ship. With grim detail, he depicts the filthy conditions of the Middle Passage, from the overcrowded and filthy quarters to the suffocating heat and pervasive odor of death. Upon his arrival in America, Set was plunged into the harsh reality of slavery, an unjust fate he neither anticipated nor deserved. This marked the outset of a lifelong struggle under the oppressive shackles of bondage. Although Said's autobiography lacks specific details about his sale into slavery, it's clear that he was forcibly torn from his homeland, family, and culture and sentenced to a life of exploitation and servitude. Said's autobiography vividly depicts the brutal conditions of slave life in North Carolina. He recounts the ceaseless drudgery endured on plantations, enduring blistering heat and physical exhaustion from dawn till dusk. The burdensome weight of slavery left Said both physically and spiritually scarred as he toiled tirelessly under its grip. Despite attempts to strip him of his identity, Said clung steadfastly to his Islamic faith. In secrecy, he continued to practice his religion, drawing solace and strength from prayer. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community, 
and we need your support. Let's continue now. Said's interactions with his enslavers were diverse, reflecting the intricate power dynamics of slavery. While some subjected him to cruelty and brutality, others surprised him with acts of kindness and compassion. These encounters shed light on the varying experiences of enslaved individuals, spanning from appalling abuse to fleeting moments of humanity and connection. In his autobiography, Omar Ivan Said recounts a daring escape from a harsh master in Charleston, South Carolina, embarking on a journey to Fayetteville, North Carolina. However, his freedom was short-lived as he was soon recaptured, thrown into jail, and later sold to James Owen, who I am said noted was surprisingly kind to him. The Owen family, recognizing his education, generously provided him with an English translation of the Quran. Additionally, with the assistance of Francis Scott Key, the author of The Star-Spangled Banner, I'm said obtained an Arabic translation of the Bible. I'm said lived well until his 90s, still enslaved until his passing in 1864, with his final resting place in Bladen County, North Carolina. He was also known by the names Uncle Moreau and Prince Omero. Although it's widely stated that Ayn Said converted to Christianity on December 3, 1820, his conversion remains contentious. There are dedications to Muhammad and his Bible, along with a dated 1857 card on which he wrote Surat and Nasr, a Quranic chapter discussing the conversion of non-Muslims to Islam in multitudes. Additionally, while others claimed he was a Christian, his autobiography and other writings present a more ambiguous stance. In his autobiography, he continues to praise Muhammad while discussing his life in his homeland. His references to Jesus the Messiah align with Quranic descriptions of Jesus and descriptions of Jesus as our master employ typical Islamic honorifics for prophets. But the story does not end here. In his autobiography, his written words convey the pain and suffering he would have endured. He writes that they chained me up like a wild animal and forcibly dragged me away from everything I held dear. Their laughter echoed around me as they struck me, finding entertainment in my suffering. I was treated with even less dignity than an animal, stripped of my humanity, and left to suffer. He further writes about the slavery punishment, saying that the whip tore into my flesh with each brutal strike, leaving my back raw and bleeding. They took pleasure in my agony, relishing their dominance over me. I prayed for death to release me from my torment, but it never came. Talking about his master, said writes that my master was a cruel and heartless man showing no mercy or compassion. I worked tirelessly under his stern gaze, fearing his wrath with every passing moment. During this, he would recall this family, thinking what would have happened to them and how they would be doing without him. He wrote that they tore me away from my family, breaking the bonds that held us together. I wept for the life I once knew, but my tears were meaningless in the face of such cruelty. He writes that I was torn away from my family, never to see them again. My wife and children were left behind, and I could do nothing to protect them or reunite with them. He always tried to escape, but could not. He writes that he longed for freedom, to break the chains that bound him. But each attempt ended in failure, met with punishments more severe than before. I was trapped, a prisoner in a land that refused to acknowledge my humanity. Said it writes about how he was deprived of even his culture, saying that they took away my name, my language, and my religion. They forced me to abandon my identity and adopt theirs. I was no longer Omar Ibn Said, but merely Omar the slave. They forbade me from practicing my religion and from speaking my native tongue. They sought to erase every trace of who I once was, to mold me into something that suited their purposes. Then he writes words that literally shock everyone. He said that even now, long after my shackles were removed, the scars of slavery linger. The memories haunt me a constant reminder of the pain I endured. I share my story to ensure that the horrors of slavery are never forgotten, hoping to prevent such atrocities from ever happening again. But why did we not know about Omar I'm said before? Well, the history of slavery in America is complex, not only because it existed, but also due to efforts to shape the narrative surrounding it. A significant part of this control involved deliberately suppressing the accounts of enslaved individuals, particularly those that differ from the dominant portrayal of slavery as merely a labor-based institution devoid of intellectual resistance or cultural identity. 
During the period of American slavery, the prevailing narrative promoted by slave owners and their allies depicted enslaved Africans as intellectually and culturally inferior to white people. This narrative sought to justify slavery by presenting enslaved individuals as naturally suited for labor and lacking the intellectual or spiritual autonomy of white people. However, accounts like that of Omar Ibn Said challenged this narrative. As an educated and devout Muslim, Said contradicted the stereotype of enslaved Africans as uneducated and culturally devoid. His autobiography, which recounted his capture, enslavement, and spiritual strength, offered an alternative narrative that highlighted the intellectual and cultural richness of enslaved African communities. In response to narratives like Said's, which threatened the legitimacy of slavery, slave owners and proponents of the institution actively suppressed such accounts. This suppression took various forms, including censorship, intimidation, and the promotion of alternative narratives that reinforced the existing power structures. As a result, stories like Omar Ibn Said were sidelined and ignored in mainstream historical discourse. Instead, the prevailing narrative of slavery persisted, perpetuating stereotypes and misconceptions about the enslaved experience. Furthermore, the absence of narratives like sets from historical records and educational materials further obscured their importance. Many people grew up learning a sanitized version of history that downplayed the agency and resilience of enslaved individuals like said, reinforcing the misconception of slavery as a mild or inevitable institution. Did you already know about Omar Ayn Said and his painful story? Isn't it true that millions of such stories exist? making countries that supported slavery ashamed. In the comments section right below, let us know how Omar's autobiography has exposed the American past. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.